Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Carry People. <laughs> man, oh man, she's a joyous, joyous, joyous day today. Um, I have got my house back and I have got my uh, office back. So, oh my goodness, I am pumped. <sighs> I know that we've, you know, house guests, you have family, you love them, right? But man, there's just nothing like having your own little spot back. And uh, I do apologize that uh, I have had to shoot a lot of my videos down in my little dungeon, but oh, we're back. And um, yeah, so I've, uh, you know, got it all back here and uh, I'm continuing on with my month of Victorinox. And I knew that I would try to pick up another Victorinox to add to my little collection when I'm EDCing. Um, today, I'm actually EDCing this uh, Victorinox Fieldmaster. Um, in my little rotation for the month, I've got the Victorinox Fieldmaster, I've got the Swiss Champ, I've got uh, two spirits, one's a Spirit X in uh, chrome, and the other one is just a Spirit in the black uh, oxide, which was a gift, which thank you so much, Mr. Anderson. And um, I've also got a Skipper too as well that's in the rotation, and I just felt that I wanted to, uh, you know, grab something else. And just to kind of make it complete, and uh, I grabbed this uh, 2012 Hunter. Now, this although this was a pre-owned, I didn't buy it from, a, I, I bought it off a of Kijiji. It was still brand new in the package, so never been used, never been sharpened. So, And I have uh, carried it in my pocket for probably, I'm not going to say a week straight, but you know, I, over the month so far, I've had it in there three times. And I also kind of, you know, so I, I don't know some of the things like how well the steel is going to hold up and things like that. But Victorinox generally has fairly decent steel. Uh, it, it's not, you know, on the lines of, say, something like uh, Max Inventor S30V or anything like that. But you know what? Uh, this is a hunter. It's designed to take into the bush with you and, um, you know, gut a deer. And I have absolutely no problem i think that this knife would be able to uh cut a deer and um uh you know skin and uh, gut a deer and quarter it up and bring it home with you I i've got no problems believing that that's what this is gonna uh, do i know i have used it in some food prep and stuff like that and i was a little bit surprised but um let's go over some uh, of the old technical specs comes with a three and about a three and three eighths inch blade uh, as far as thickness, I think you're looking at about 2.5 millimeters thick. Uh, and then it also comes with a similar sized safety, or they call this one here now a gut hook. Um, for uh, if you're out in the bush and you've got your deer, you can stick this in there and you can zip them up through the stomach and uh, you've got this curved shape here so you're not gonna poke into the entrails and get that stuff all messy when you're actually uh, gutting your deer. Now the other thing that this can be used for is also a great safety blade. If you come across an accident and I know that this blade is also on the uh, safety the, the safety uh, rescue uh, knives that Victorinox brings. It allows you to slip it inside the seat belt and cut the seat belt as somebody out there without jabbing them with the end. And um, I gotta say Victorinox knows how to make serrations. These are sharp. On my skipper, it is, is a serrated uh, blade and I just cut the tip of my finger and I don't know if you can see it anymore, but I was holding a granddaughter was over. She wanted to have a bath. So Papa said, sure. And we always buy her these little things from the dollar store and they're like little compressed um, Disney characters on a face cloth and they've got cardboard on each side and they're wrapped in plastic and so I just always go zick zick and then I open it up and then she puts it in the water and it slowly expands and she absolutely loves it. It's one of the ways that she gets in the bathtub and stays a clean kid. But with that, uh, oh sorry there it is, you can see it here. Oh I didn't even realize I cut the wrong one. Uh, I was uh, looking for the wrong one and I mean I had it like this and I just cut and I just caught it the very tip of it and now with this blade with a, the serrated blade that uh, comes with a skipper it's a fully serrated blade and it just barely cut and it cut and I was bleeding in no time and, and it uh, wow Victorinox sure has some uh, wicked serrations now 
Uh, I guess uh, the other tools here that'll come with is it'll come with a Phillips uh, number. Now they call it a number two Phillips, but it'll also uh, fit a number one Phillips. So you know it is both. It is, it is fairly sturdy, and of course you've got your um, your ring too as well here. And one of the most uh, important things for me, what I grabbed this was. Now they call it a bone saw, but I mean it's it's a wood saw, and I gotta say, folks. The day that this saw was made, they must have just, they must have just um, replaced the blade or something there that that files these uh, blades in there because this is sharp. Oh, it is incredibly sharp. How how sharp this is, and it is, you know, it's a it's a larger. Uh, there we go. So you can see that she's um, a plus three and three eighths inch wood saw blade. And I guess you could call it a, um, a bone saw because it'll cut through bone and it'll also cut through wood. And it doesn't have a lock on it. Um, the other two blades do. Yeah, so it's, uh, um, so the other two blades have got the locks on it. Now let's kind of go through the, the numbers here a little bit. So this is 111 millimeters. It's 150 grams, and they say that it is 20 millimeters thick. Now that looks like, I don't know if they're talking about just this, but this looks like bigger than 20 millimeters. This looks like probably 25, maybe 20, 30 um, at the top of your humps. And um, this is, it's got um, the ear grow scales on it with a little bit of rubber inserts on it. Just gives you a little bit of grip when it gets, when it gets wet. And, uh, you know, a very capable knife. Now, but there is some things on there that I wish uh, that uh, Victorinox had done when they designed this knife. First of all, I really do like the idea of having the one-handed tool on the, this blade. And it is, you know, like almost like, I guess, a fully flat ground or almost a really high saber. You can see where it's got the transition here on the, there. So it is, you know, if you do not, not take this out, you've very got, such the reminiscent of a regular, just a Victorinox blade. You can see that they absolutely love that shape. And you can see here that, hey, I've been using this, this quite a bit. Now it is a, a, a quite a bit bigger blade than the Field Master, or than the Field Master here and, uh, you know, the Super Champ. But you can see how they love that blade shape. And I think they called that a drop point blade. But um, this is, well, this one here is a spring lock or a, a friction... Uh, a slip joint this one here has got the lock built in and I gotta say that is the first mistake that Victorinox made with this knife is now most of us it'll open one-handed and I can get it to close one-handed too it's a little bit of a struggle and there's a danger that I'm gonna cut myself but the lock on here is this way so you gotta take it off with your hand push it this way and then close it with two hands but on the serrated blade one-handed but you can close that one-handed and it just does not make sense to me to do that. Um, if you're going to do that, reverse it for goodness sakes and open this because you're gonna be opening up your straight blade way more times than you are gonna be this blade. And if you wanna make it truly one-handed, then it would be nice to be able to push that way, close it and then open it up all with one hand without having to now, the easiest, safest way is to use two hands, is to close it like that, you know, but it's dumb to do it that way. Now, the other thing that I wish that uh, Victorinox had done on this knife is, is really get rid of this one-handed opening for the uh, serrated, the gut hook blade. Because now that this is a, because the shape on it, now it's not just the serrations it's the shape now this shape doesn't denote that you're going to use that every day you know it's really really good for some things but um, a serrated blade you know you, you could cut some rope with this and stuff like that because you know some fibrous materials but chances are you're going to grab your regular blade to be cut through some cardboard um, and some rope too as well you're going to probably try to use that blade too as well unless it's you know quite a big honking piece of cardboard or a of um, rope then you might try to use a serrated but you're really going to only use it as a gut hook or as a safety um, to open up a seat belt and therefore I don't think that you need to have 
this little one-handed opening tool because it makes it god-awful uncomfortable. It really, I mean, when you're squeezing this knife, this really digs into your the back of your fingers. And I just don't see the need for it. You know, you're pressing down, and even if you're trying to be careful, it's still getting into the, you know, to the, the um, I don't know what to call it webbing or, or whatever, but uh, the pads of your of your fingers here. And I would be just as um, happy with this knife if this had, now this here, you can see this, this um, wood saw, right on the very end, it, it sticks out just a smidge and allows you just to grab it from the end and then open it up. And it is so handy. You know, if they took that and put one of those here on the end here, so I could just grab it like this and open it up, I'd be just as happy. I, I don't really see the need to open that up with one hand and do my, you know, my gut hooking and then closing it up using the good side of, of the, the closing uh, tab. Man, it's just, I think it's an oversight on the engineers. I think it's an engineer who thought it was a good idea, but didn't really take that knife out and use it a whole lot. Um, the guy designed it and just, it, it, you know, it allows them to solve, oh, one-handed opening with both blades. But you know what? They're not one-handed closing with both blades. And it's godly, ungodly uncomfortable sometimes. So, yeah, Victorinox, if you're listening, make the switch. Swallow your pride. Make it a one-handed opening for the main blade, a two-handed opening for this blade, and a two-handed opening for the, the bone saw. And you got yourself a winner there. Um, yeah. Now, now, when I was using this as some food prep, I was cutting some onions with it, and I was cutting some apples with it. And hey, did you know that if you close your eyes, plug your nose, take a bite of an apple, and take a bite of an onion, you cannot tell the difference. You can't taste the difference. Now, I haven't tried it. It's just something that I've read. Now, uh, so much of your taste is actually through your olfactory sense, your nose. So, hey, that's something to try out. Maybe I'll try it out on camera here one of these days. But if... Uh, yeah, so I did notice that this high saber ground, when you're cutting through, sometimes it cracks your, you know, when you're at, when I was slicing the apples, the apples are kind of cracking a little bit. And I was a little bit surprised because it doesn't seem like a really super thick blade, but you know what, it, it was doing that. But it still performed admirably. It diced up the onions, it cut some apples for my granddaughter, and it cut some oranges. And um, so far this stainless steel has been fantastic because I did leave some orange juice on it and it didn't stain or discolor whatsoever. So Photoronex, uh, I think they use Inox steel. Ah, oh, darn it. One of these days I'm gonna have to find out. I'm gonna phone my buddy Felix and say, Felix, what kind of damn steel do they use in here? If you know, put it down in the description. Or maybe I will. Maybe that should be my job, damn it. All right, guys. I, yeah, so other than that, I, you know, I think it's a fairly decent little knife. It's not super heavy, weighty, or bulky. Um, now this, like I said, this one has been discontinued. Um, what they've done now is they've gone with the Hunter XT grip is what they call it. It's got the same tools. Instead of having though the Phillips on the back, you've got yourself a, a corkscrew, which I, I think the actual most, uh, the best tool that you could put on the back here would be your awl, a large awl with a sewing eye in it. I just think that that's, that's the best tool that you could have on the back because a lot of times I think guys are going to use this as a little bit of a bushcraft knife. Uh, if you're going to be out in the bush with it, you want an awl to be able to kind of, you know, punch some holes in some leather and um, do a little bit of sewing. And also if you're, you know, in the bush whittling, you can use this to, uh, your awl to kind of drill a hole. Now I might end up um, taking a, f a file and filing this and making this more of a drill than a Phillips. And um, yeah, if I do do that, I'll definitely do a video on it and I'll let you know how it works too as well. But I think that's something that I would mod because you know, it does seem like it's a fairly hefty chunk of steel. I'm sure I could put that into a shape that's gonna make this more of a bushcraft knife than a Phillips screwdriver. All right, now on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna give this knife a five. I think that this um, uh, closing tab on this side being backwards is a big fail. I think that this here is an ergonomic nightmare having this other um, one-handed opening eye so close to where it digs into your hand. And I also think that having a Phillips and not an awl is a mistake here on the back too as well. So therefore this gets a five from the big Canucker. Well, 
hope you liked what you saw. Um, and I hope uh, that you, uh, you know, continue on to stop by this channel. And please, please give me a thumbs up as well as a subscription. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys for stopping by. Now, please, please, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, I know the vaccine is out there. It's coming. But please, please, for whatever you do, keep safe out there. Keep your stick on the ice, the shiny side up. This is the Big Canucker saying adios.